All right, guys, it's Bass Quest here. We're over at Lake Chickamauga again at Sail Creek Recreation Area. And this is the craziest ice I've ever seen on this lake. Watch this. I've never had to break this kind of ice to go out fishing here before. Water temperature right now, Let's see if I can go to a different view here. I don't know if y'all can see that. 34 degrees. Take it real slow. 34 degree water temperature. I'm trying to bust this ice to get out here. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to do it. I mean, I might end up having to go to Bly's Ferry to get in today. We'll see, y'all stay with me. It's gonna be an adventure. It's gonna be crazy. There's been some huge fish and it's been these temperatures. This is the biggest cold front we've had here in a couple years. And uh, there's been just some huge fish being caught. So I'm hoping that we can do the same here and end up catching some real big ones, but we'll see. Hoping I don't tear my transducer out of my boat right now. Good grief. Alright. Okay. Update. We've almost made it to the bridge. I think once I get out in here in this creek channel, it's going to be a little bit better. But I don't know. I'm about to find out. Man, it doesn't sound good. Eat dogs. Oh, we don't pull a Titanic here. Good 9 11. All right, guys, update. I had to leave Sail Creek. I made it about maybe 150 yards, and ice just stayed the same thickness. I mean, it's like that thick, like one and a half, two inches thick. Now I've gone, you can probably see behind me, that's the Highway 60 bridge. Over here across is Bly's Ferry. That ramp is full. So what I've done is I've come across this ramp and you can see it's not exactly made for wintertime fishing at all. It's <laughs> kind of sketchy. I backed my truck off the end of the ramp here and uh, it's still a gradual slope. So I've got it in the water now. It's kind of weird and uh, didn't break anything yet. So we'll see, <laughs> let's see what we can do here. Y'all stay tuned. I've, I've wasted about two more hours here. I've got like three hours before dark. So I don't even know if we're even gonna get to fish much, but we're gonna give it a shot anyway. So let's see what happens. <laughs> Made it to the first spot. Finally got a Alabama rig rigged up the way I wanted to rig it up. Should have done that when I was at the house, but things have been a little crazy lately. So just finally got that done. And we're about to make our first cast here. I was hoping to be on the water at noon and it is three o'clock. So, <laughs> not exactly what I was going for, but hey, can't complain. It looks beautiful out here. It's wicked cold, but who cares? Maybe we'll get one to bite. You can see I've got my hog farmer set up the way I wanted to set it up originally here. I've got some dummies on the end. And now I've got my three bigger baits, my actual baits on the back there. Let's see what this looks like. Looks pretty good. Runs pretty good. All right. We're gonna get up here, see what we can do. All right, guys, we're on our first cast here. What I'm doing is I'm just moving along a main river ledge here. I'm trying to keep my boat in about 20 foot of water. I'm throwing up onto the ledge. I'm probably throwing into 10 foot of water or so. I'm just watching my mapping back here. I'm just slow rolling that thing down through there. What'll happen is there's little, as these ledges, when you go down through here, there's little imperfections on the ledge itself. And uh, those areas, little cuts or whatever you want to call them, they create eddies. And the fish can sit in those eddies and be out of the current and still be close to the, the warmest water around. The water temp here looks like it's hovering around 40 degrees, which is way, way warmer than anything that I've seen thus far. So. 
in the back of that creek. I don't know if I, you guys saw that earlier, but it was 33 degrees in Sail Creek. So anyway, we're just gonna ease our way down through here. We don't have a whole lot of time, so we're just gonna make the most of it. Just throw this rig around. A lot of guys been catching some great biggins on it, so I don't know. Maybe I'll get lucky and and uh, have one stick it. I've got weedless, weightless swim or weighted, sorry, weighted swim bait hooks on here. I'm throwing in some areas I'm not super familiar with, so I'm trying not to lose a real expensive rig. But ideally, I'd like to have open hooks on it. With those open hooks, I have a better chance if if one swipes at it to get them. But I'm just hoping with a real big one, they won't swipe. They'll just eat. So. I don't know, we'll see. One thing I think is real important when you're throwing these rigs is to vary your retrieve. You don't want to be doing the, you don't want to just slow roll it back in. You want to, just like a spinner bait or something, you want to sit there and pop it and, and move it and get that thing to, to uh, flutter and get some reaction bites out of those fish. A lot of times they'll just sit there and trail this thing and if you get it to kind of pulsate or get it to pop or, or move just the right way, that's when one will actually commit to, to getting it. However, in this cold water, I think slow and steady. Oh, I got bumped. It got interesting for a second there. That's just what I was talking about. I don't know if y'all, y'all probably can't see it on my graph here, but there's a, a turn right here a little turn in that ledge and that fish was right on that turn so we're gonna turn around here and see if we can there's usually a group of them so we'll see if we can get one to commit here Too. Well, it's foul hooked him somehow, even with a weedless hook. Little guy. He felt good. big as I thought he was, but he ain't bad. Three pounder. Same little spot. <coughs> I'm gonna try this lipless in here real quick. It's not super deep. I think I can yo-yo it on them. I might be able to get them to eat it a little bit better. Yes. 
good too, it feels like. Yeah, that's gonna be a big one right there. Oh, ain't that big. Solid one, though. Another three. Three, three and a half on like a two pounder body. <laughs> Love it. another one weird looking little fish all right guys well that wasn't half bad for I think I was on the water total of two and a half hours by the time I got done messing around trying to find a good ramp to fish on so hope y'all enjoyed that I think I ended up catching a full limit of bass there mainly off of one spot. Again, it's one of those turns on the main lake there um, on a break or a ledge and uh, throwing that rig on there. So that was fun, I had a good time. Glad to get out of the house. So y'all keep praying for my daughter and uh, look forward to some new content coming up soon. All right guys, I just wanted to give y'all a quick overview of the area that I was fishing the other day. If you'll look, you can see this is a Navionics web app. But this darker blue is your shallow water. This are your bars along the main river. This light blue is the river channel. And the area I was fishing, I'm gonna zoom in here. If you look right here, you can see it a little better right there. You see this ledge where these contour lines are close together running all the way down through here. This is a pretty you know, solid ledge running all the way down. However, when you get to this area right here, you see the contour lines spread out and it creates what I call a horseshoe or a cut that will create an eddy with that current running down through there. So those fish, what they'll do is they'll pile into this gap here and they'll be able to, you know, move to deep water if they want to. And this is actually, you know, pretty decently deep water in that little cut there. And they can just hang out there in the bait fish as the bait fish move up and down this ledge. The bait fish, you know, they're not wanting to swim against the current right now. will tend to be pushed into these little spots as well. So it's just a great wintertime fishing spot. So when you guys are out on the water graphing around, just make sure to look for something like that. And again, I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. But this horseshoe right here, another spot I've caught them in the past. You know, this is another spot. And then down through here, I've caught them. So just typical wintertime stuff. You know, if I was going to go back out and look, I would, you know, graph some of this as well. You see these horseshoes right through here, another horseshoe. Um, you can see these, honestly, I like the... Uh, the Lake Master Plus much better than I do this Navionics. You can't see quite as well on it. Here's another area that would be probably a good spot to look. This would be a great area to look, but just look when you're when you're going through and graphing these ledges, you really got to pay attention to these imperfections and you also want to pay attention this time of year, especially moving forward into February and March, where are these fish going to spawn? So, you know, these big um, bars like this are great areas for them to spawn. We've got some spawning bays right here, right here right here and of course we got a major creek running in right here which is just a you know an obvious spot that gets a lot of pressure but anyway just some tips for you guys hopefully it'll help you this winter and spring going forward